Okay, I know I've been a bit video happy these last few days, having discovered uh, the joys of this video screen capture stuff, um, but I swear this one is going to knock your socks off. Um, so what we're going to do is automatically create a catalogue within InDesign, and we're going to do it directly uh, by using our Onyx data. Um, and our Onyx data looks a bit like this. Um, it's awfully lengthy, it's complicated because, um, well it's not complicated but it's complex because there's an awful lot of data and a lot of it we don't need uh, within a catalogue, uh, you know we don't need the availability code, uh, we don't need the returns code, we don't even need the uh, distributor details. Um, so the first stage is to not tidy this up but to get something out of it that's um, tailored specifically for the task in hand and to do that we're going to use some XSL and here's the XSL we're going to use now this is actually quite short that's the the full extent of it and although it looks a bit codey and complicated um, it's written in English uh, it follows a few XSL conventions but um, it's pretty straightforward so for instance um, we're going to be this is this is intended to create a new XML file um, and you can see how it's going to work uh, here's a and one of the new XML elements we're going to create, for instance, and it's going to be for the author's first name. Um, so we start by tagging up, uh, by opening the tag with the author first name, and then the content of the tag itself is going to be defined by this. And all this says is, go to the XML document, get the value of contributor forward slash names before key, which if you know your Onyx record, um, is the way that the Onyx record uh, defines the author's first name and then close that tag, uh, close author first name. So even though at first glance that's an awful lot of characters right there, um, it's pretty straightforward. Let me show you another one. Um, the price here, this is the price tag we're going to create, um, starts with uh, saying that this is the price tag. Uh, the price is defined by saying uh, go to the XML, get the value of, oops, get the value of um, supply detail forward slash price forward slash price amount and if you were to follow the tree of the onyx record you'd, you'd see that that's where the price is held and then again close it down by by having that closing tag there so sure it's a little bit fiddly but um, it's, it's also quite straightforward once you get your head around it as well um, so we don't actually have to do anything with this file uh, because InDesign CRE allows you to um, import uh, import XML and pass an XSL style sheet it as it's coming in. So here we have a template that I've set up, um, and if I just zoom in, you'll be able to see. And I'm going to have an image here, um, category, the title, the author's first name and last name the description of the book, the publication date, the format, the ISBN number and the price. And you can see that what I've got here at the moment is just placeholder text. Um, but these colourful tags are the uh, the tags that are going to link up to our XML tags. If I find the um, the tags menu, you can see that these are my tags that I've defined. Um, so if I click on the first name here, you can see that the tag that's going to dictate what content goes between these two purple brackets, and you can see that's purple there, um, is author first name. Similarly, you can see product ID, this is going to be the data that goes within this product ID tag, um, and category. Uh, we're going to get the category data from the new XML file we've created, and that's going to go in there. So let me show you the magic. First of all, we click on the uh, the area that contains this this placeholder data, so this is the book area up here. Then we go to File, Import XML, we navigate to the output file from our, um, from our Onyx uh, repository, um, and of course we use the ANCO APM, uh, ANCO Publishing Manager, and as I've shown you in a previous tutorial, you just have to click once to get the Onyx data out of there. And then we're going to set these, um, these parameters, we're going to apply this XSLT uh, style sheet, now this is, the, this is where um, we saved that uh, that XSL that I've just shown you. We're going to clone repeating text elements. What that means is that every time we have some text that isn't part of a tag, so for instance author here and category here and ISBN here, um, we want that to be cloned for each record. 
import text elements into tables if text match. It doesn't really matter if we have that one checked or not. Um, do not import contents of white space only elements. We always need to have that one checked for the purposes of this. So we OK that. <laughs> Naturally, um, the editor website is uh, not allowing us to look at the DTD, but such is life. Um, click on that because I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it won't be too onerous. And then you can see that we've imported every record from our Onyx data, um, passing it through the XSL. Uh, and the glorious thing is, if I just get rid of all those tags for the moment, um, that look, we've imported the first three records there. Now, there's only one page in this document at the moment. Oh, and let me just show you close up uh, whilst we're here. So, into the memory, uh, the uh, category tag, the correct category has appeared. Um, this anchored image that's been populated with the right image, there's the title, there's the author name. This is the correct dis description for this particular book. That's the date that it was published. B format paperback. There's the ISBN and there's the price. If we go over here, look at the Romanian. Yep, it's memoir. Because I got the XSL, by the way, to sort by category, so um, it's done even that job as well. Um, Romanian by Bruce Benderson. Here's the description. There's the thing. And it's all, oh, it's just absolutely lovely. But here's the extra cool thing. Um, let's create a new page. Oops, not paragraph, page. Where's the pages menu? You see, I have so many things open. I'm my own worst enemy. Pages. Let's create a new page by doing that. And uh, we've got a master uh, page set up, so when I create a new page, it takes those um, definitions with it. I'm going to select that text frame. I'm going to click on the overflow text, and you can see my cursor's loaded up with all of the data. And then I'm going to click there. Uh, by holding down my um, my uh, shift key and would you look at that it has populated this whole document auto automatically creating pages for every single book that we have and it saved me about a million years oh do you know it actually makes me tingle to look at it um, let me just show you close up let's shut down the uh, structure menu for a minute so we've got a little bit more room rid of that as well. Oops. No, go away. So, um, so what do we have? This is the fiction category. So as I as I mentioned, that XSL um, oops, I ruined it. That XSL uh, sorts by category. In fact, let me just show you that so I can show you how easy it is. Do you remember this XSL we were looking at? The way I do that get the XSL to sort by category is this single line here, that's what it takes, sort by the big main subject. Um, so that's done. Um, so let me show you again. All of these pages are accurate, beautifully presented. Um, this is general non-fiction because the categories are wrong in the Onyx record, obviously. Um, classics, crime, what else do we have here? It's just all done. So if you want to know how to do this, then do get in touch with me, emma at snowbooks.com, and I will be delighted to share it with you, and I may get a little bit too enthusiastic.